Windlands is a grappling hook based adventure exploration game. It's available for the Vive, Rift and OS VR for about $17 US. It can also be played without VR on either mouse and keyboard or a controller, but I'll be specifically reviewing the VR support for this game as of May 2017. Starting with the story. The game places you in the ruins of a fallen civilization and gives you the task of restoring life to the world. This is certainly a title where story takes a backseat to gameplay. Rather than driving the gameplay, it feels more like an excuse for it. Don't get me wrong, the story isn't bad, there just isn't really enough of it to do much more than give context. What about the gameplay then? The game gives you three main areas to explore. The jungle, the city, and the sky. In each area there are three crystals to collect. Collect all the jungle crystals to unlock the city, collect all the city crystals to unlock the sky, and collect all the sky crystals to finish the game. There are also collectible tablets scattered throughout the world, each one forming a piece of a mural relating to the game's lore. They're not essential to the game's progression and can be completely ignored without penalty. That leads us to locomotion. Getting around involves a mix of parkour and grappling. Parkour includes trackpad smooth movement, jumping, and a sort of wall jumping mechanic. Grappling though, is where the real fun is. Simply point and shoot at something in range, and you'll accelerate towards it. The game offers three difficulty options. Easy lets you grapple anything, effectively eliminating all the challenge from the game, but certainly not the fun. Normal only lets you grapple bushes, making for a brutal but rewarding learning curve. And hard is much the same as normal, but with more parkour. Failure in this game is falling. The game features checkpoints placed strategically throughout the world. Hit the sand or press the respawn button, and you'll respawn at the last one you activated. For the most part, they're well placed, but there are certainly a few unforgiving stretches. Now, purely my personal preference, but I would have loved the ability to place my own checkpoints, just as you can in climbing. Let's talk about the elephant in the room. Motion sickness. The game offers an impressive range of comfort options including segmented turning, disabling strafing, and even a comfort cage. That being said, this game did certainly try my stomach. Now, having over 4 hours in game, I can happily report to having built up a strong tolerance, but as we all know, mileage varies wildly when it comes to motion sickness. Know this going in, this game will almost certainly churn your stomach to some degree initially. The graphics in this game are polished, consistent, and at times breathtaking. No issues with performance on my 1070, and this is a game where that really counts. As far as graphic options go, the game offers both anti-aliasing and shadow quality settings. That leaves us with the verdict. Having pushed through the occasional bouts of queasiness and the brutal learning curve, I have been rewarded with some of the most exhilarating experiences I've ever had in any game. The indie developers of this title have done a fantastic job with it at almost every level. If you have the stomach, this one warrants serious consideration.